Hey, Tommy from the Run Testers with another running shoe review. In this video, loads of the Run Testers are going to be talking through the Socony Endorphin Pro 3, an exciting new carbon plate shoe which we have very much enjoyed testing out. Massive thanks to Sports Shoes for sending us the test sample so we could actually do this review. If you want to find out more about the shoe, then head down into the captions and click the link to head over to Sports Shoes. Right, let's dive in to the review. The Socony Endorphin Pro 3 costs £210 or $225. It weighs in at 209 grams or 7.4 ounces for men in a size 8, and the drop is 8 millimeters. The Socony Endorphin Pro 3 receives some significant updates to the brand's carbon plate ratio. The biggest of those is the noticeable increase in midsole stack height to 39.5 mm in the heel and 31.5 mm in the forefoot. That produces an experience similar to super shoe options from brands like Nike and Asics. That Power Run PB midsole foam works alongside the S-curve carbon fiber plate to produce a soft, bouncy sensation when running, along with a speed roll design that propels the foot forward with a fluid motion. The upper is made from a lightweight mesh designed to be comfortable and breathable with a form fit structure to give a lockdown fit. There's also an XD900 outsole to protect the midsole foam and offer grip on the road. The Endorphin Pro 3 fit me perfectly well, true to size, I've had absolutely no problems at all. Nice amount of room in the shoe and a good lockdown hold, uh, which I haven't had in the Endorphin Speed 3, incidentally. I found that a bit too loose uh, for me and I've had some heel slippage, but no such problems in the Pro 3. The Endorphin Pro 3 is a nice shoe to put on straight away. It fits <clears throat> true to size, size 7, same as always for me, plenty of room in the toe box. The um, heel rubbed me a tiny bit on the first couple of runs, but didn't kind of form any blister and it's been fine since. Worth noting as well that the laces stay done up, which is not a given in a race issue, and that they're easy to put on. Again, also not a given in um, carbon plated shoes. The fit for me in the Socony Endorphin Pro 3 is true to size. Um, I definitely wouldn't size up or down in this shoe. I found it very comfortable. Um, and it holds the foot in nicely, but there's a nice bit of space in there as well. So it's a very comfortable shoe. Uh, definitely wouldn't have gone for any of the size other than my size eight. So fit wise, I found they came up quite short in the foot. I'm a UK five. I wear a four and a half in kind of Converse normal shoes, but I found like I didn't have a lot of room in the toe with this. This is a UK five and it was, I mean, I, would, I probably wouldn't go up to five and a half, but there's not a lot of room. So I think if you're between sizes, I probably, you know, like I say, I'm I'm a four or four and a half in normal shoes. But if you, you know, definitely go up a whole size or you need some more room in this. Equally, it's a racing shoe. You don't want loads of room. You don't want them to be heavy and flapping around mid race, but it is short in the foot for me. So fit for me was absolutely spot on in my UK size eight. I didn't have any real issues in terms of my testing. Now, I do think it still suits narrow feet a bit like the uh, Pro 2. What I will say though, I think this change in the upper and this kind of more stretchy kind of structure to it does make it a little bit more accommodating, I think. So while it's not designed, I think, for wide feet, I think people might get on a bit more with this shoe than they would do with the Pro 2. But other than that, it fit really well for me. I think you get a nice kind of strong uh, lock in from the laces. You've got a nice kind of thin tongue that for me just sat very securely on the top of my foot and around similar level padding that we got on the Pro 2. So yeah, all kind of positives for me on the fit. I would say go true to size based on my testing. So what a lovely shoe this is. Like I really like the Endorphin Pro 1 and 2, but I love this shoe. Like the Endorphin Pro 1 and 2, pretty much the same shoe. I found them really nice shoes to run. I found them very smooth, very efficient. I found them really good kind of racing shoes, uh, especially for shorter distance events, but on the longer stuff, if you weren't running that well, they started to feel very harsh under the foot, I found. Like I had one half marathon with a big blow up where they really were pretty uncomfortable to run in by the end. But I have had long runs in them where they felt fine, at, you know, at good paces. It's just really, you know, I had to be on it in them or they did start to feel a bit firm compared to a lot of other super shoes. This is definitely not the case with the Endorphin Pro 3. I've done 72k running in it and I've you know pretty much loved every single step. I've done a lot of longer runs in it. It's been you know part of my marathon training. I did a kind of steady 10 miler straight out of the box, which I ran kind of about 59 dead. It felt great for that run. Really comfortable, responsive, 
cushioned but speedy, um, all the good things. Uh, and the next run I took it was actually a 22 miler as part of my marathon training with a couple of miles tacked on the end as I warmed down home. So, you know, long distance stuff. Um, and it was just felt really comfortable and cushioned the whole way. So, uh, it's the kind of run that really is exactly typifies the difference between this and the Pro 2, because in the Pro 2, that would have been a run, I think, where I would have experienced some kind of firmness, some harshness by the end of it. And it wouldn't have been one of my first choices for that run. Whereas looking at those kind of long runs on my plans, I go forward, the Endorphin Pro 3 is always going to come to mind as a great option for them. Interestingly, I actually would say that it's more comfortable than the Speed 3 uh, for a kind of fast shoe. And, and in the past, the opposite has always been the case. The Speed 1 and 2, I think, were better long distance running and racing shoes because they were more comfortable than the Pro. But now this is the higher stack, the more cushioned, the softer, more comfortable shoe. It still has the roll, you know, from the speed roll technology, but it's not quite as pronounced. Like almost more the dominant feeling with this shoe now is the bounciness and the kind of softness of the foam you get here. More in line with other super shoes, I'd say, where you're getting that nice sink in and propulsion, but you do still get a little bit of the rocker from that speed roll tech. So I was really impressed with it, how it went for kind of longer runs at kind of steady or slower race paces, but I wanted to push it a little bit harder. So I did one long workout where I did five sets of 2K reps at 335 per K pace, and then rounded off with a, a hard 5K aiming for 320 per K pace. And it really cruised through those, those 2K reps as I'd expect it to. That's kind of just slightly slower than my marathon pace. And I went into the 5K, you know, feeling quite tired at the end of a long week and not really expecting anything. And then ran the, the 320s very comfortably, did like a 1627 5K um, in the shoe. And it, you know, it felt superbly quick so i do think it's got the versatility for those shorter races for shorter harder reps as well as being very comfortable and cushioned and efficient for those longer runs Sockany, well done you really pulled something out the bag this year i, I definitely think this is Sockany's year for shoes because there's some great stuff coming out from the brand at the moment and the pro 3 really does just show that off in a, in a great way because i wasn't a big fan of the endorphin pro 2 i raced in it a couple of times it's a bit too firm for me, didn't really enjoy it. Um, definitely didn't get anywhere close to the, the times that I was expecting to get in those races. I just found it a little bit uncomfortable. It wasn't really delivering the experience that I expect from carbon plate shoes. I know for some people they liked that firmness when compared to something like the Vaporfly, but for me, it just it just didn't do anything for me. There were other shoes out there that might not even be carbon plate shoes that just did what the Endorphin Pro 2 was doing, but but better. Now, the Endorphin Pro 3, to call it a new version of the Pro 2 is almost unfair because it's, it's basically a new shoe. It feels nothing like the Endorphin Pro 2. It, it's got so many changes in this shoe that they could have called it a completely different name and it, it would have been fine because it, it's the experience is so different. The biggest one of those is that upped stack height. And when you're running this shoe for the first time and you're expecting an experience like the Endorphin Pro 2, you don't get that. You, you, you get a really bouncy, cushioned experience that is a lot more like what you'd expect from some of the other carbon plate shoes out that have, have that sort of experience. The Vaporflies, A6 Master Speed Sky Plus, the Alpha Fly, it feels like those shoes. And it's really exciting to put on because I wasn't expecting that from this shoe. I was expecting it more to be like a subtle change to the um, previous design, but it's not. It's like a new shoe. It feels great. I absolutely love running this shoe. It might, I might even be using this shoe for Chicago. Um, marathon that I'm doing in October just because I've been enjoying running this so much and I think it has a lot of benefits over s some of the things that the Vaporfly does and the A6 Metaspeed Sky Plus. I think it feels a bit bouncier than the A6 Metaspeed Sky Plus. Probably not as much as the Vaporfly but it's definitely feels a lot more stable than the Vaporfly for me. I, I, I feel like when I'm running in this shoe it's a lot more it's a lot safer, it's a lot more grounded, um, but you still get a really good level of bounce and responsiveness from it, um, which just goes to make this shoe such a fantastic update to the um, previous version. I've, it, it, it's really cushioned and soft, but bouncy as well. And I've, it's just a great shoe to run at speed in, but also run at a slower pace as well. So I've done about 60K in this shoe so far, and that has varied between um, park runs, so 5K park runs. I've actually got my park run PB in this now, my 5K PB. So my uh, 5K PB is now 18.47, which knocked off uh, 10 seconds from my previous um, PB about two years ago in the Vaporfly. Wasn't expecting to get that because I've not been nearing that sort of time at the moment. And I've been trying a lot of super shoes out to do that. 
But this this shoe, yeah, got a 5k PB in it the first time I wore it, and I really enjoyed that run. It just didn't feel like I was putting lots of effort into that run. Well, it did feel like I was putting a lot of effort in, but it felt like this was really efficient. And um, by the end of that run, I was just I just really enjoyed it. My legs felt great, and um, at that at that at 5k. Uh, distance, I could feel the benefits of this shoe when I was expecting to really feel them uh, half marathon and marathon distance. When I've been doing marathon training runs in this at my marathon training pace at, which is about 420 minute kilometers, still feels absolutely perfect. By the end of the run, I'll probably do like a 20K. Um, by the end of that, my legs feel great. Still feel like there's loads of energy in there. I've not really dropped off over the over the course of that run, um, and it just feels so fluid. The speed roll technology that sits in there really makes the shoe move forward nicely, in combination with that carbon plate and the bouncy um, power run PB foam that sits in there. It just really feels great for a run, and I, and I'm I think this shoe is. A massive leap forward in what Socony has produced uh, when it comes to their ratios, and yeah, as I say, I might be using it for Chicago. I like it that much. Other things to note about the shoe: I really like the upper. Um, I don't like the color, uh, but the color is irrelevant. They'll release some new colors, I imagine, over the next few months. Um, but the upper is really light and thin. It's it's really hot at the moment in the UK. Um, and I like wearing the shoe because it's it's quite breathable, but it doesn't feel hot on your feet. It's a really thin, uh, lightweight upper, which just feels great on the feet, but it doesn't feel too thin. It's not like the Vaporfly, uh, the original Vaporfly, which was a bit plastic in, wasn't very comfortable to wear. This manages to be both thin um, and lightweight, but also feels quite protective and snug on the feet. There's not loads of padding on it, but there's just enough to really make it feel like a more conventional fitted shoe than something that's massively stripped down to be lightweight. I'd also say that the outsole, I'm really impressive as well. There's a fair bit of covering on the outsole, of, of covering that power on PB midsole foam. Um, there's not, it's not been wet in the UK recently, but I have done a lot of runs, of inclines and declines, quite hilly around here. Um, and I feel, I, I've felt that it's really gripped the ground really well. Um, I think this is a really nice rubber on the, on the outsole. And there's not a lot of wear at all, really, uh, on the, on the uh, midsole of the shoe. A little bit around the heel there, um, but not too much, not as much as I'd expect probably from what, what I've been doing in it. So yeah. Very impressed so far. Today's test for the Endorphin Pro 3 by Saucony is a 10k progression run. Let's see how we go. I've run about 50 plus miles now in the Endorphin Pro 3. I've done some really short, sharp mile reps after an ill-advised leg day at the gym and they really helped me out with them. They really um, made me want to run fast in that kind of moment and um, kind of caressed my feet as well, made it feel nice and bouncy. I know some people have said that the previous edition were quite hard. That's certainly not something that you could uh, say about these shoes. I've also done easy runs in them. Um, they were great too, um, having seen people race in very wet conditions at a podium 5K. Um, they obviously work well in that kind of wet, slippy condition. It was like a slick track kind of situation as well. Um, so no problems there at all. And uh, I also took them out for a 10K progression run earlier today. I would just note that that cutaway does get stone stuck in it just occasionally. Um, so if you're running on a particularly gravelly area, worth bearing in mind. Done. And uh, what the 10K progression run has reinforced for me is what I already thought about the Pro 3, Endorphin Pro 3, which is that the more you put into it, the more it makes you want to run faster. All in all, I would happily keep training in this one. Run test performance. This part of the run, the run review. Um, how do they feel? Why should you buy them? So they're... I would say I've used these for a few of my long runs and the long runs have kind of accidentally become progression runs. I'm in by no means running as quick as any of the other guys in this review, but I feel like I've kind of, you know what I mean, gone out, tried to do an 8.30 minute mile for 10 miles and I've gradually picked up and finished at more of an eight minute mile, which is exactly what you want from a super shoe. That's what you want a carbon fiber plate to do. You want it to kind of push you forward. It's got that kind of speed roll technology and it definitely does you do feel like it's easier to run quicker. It feels a bit clunky when you're running slow and a bit kind of, but that's like all super shoes, isn't it? It, it does make you want to run fast. And I feel like I, for my speed work, I normally, I'd normally reach for the Vaporfly. I've been testing 
this alongside the Alpha Fly 2, Next% Percent 2, and the Asics Meta Speed Sky Plus. And they're all kind of, I feel like they're all kind of at a similar bar, to be honest. Obviously, the Alpha Fly is a very different shoe. But I'd probably, you know, I, I don't know if I would, I think this, what I'm trying to say is I think I would reach for this, I would content, like if I was trying to pick a shoe for a marathon, this is now in the game. And I feel like the Endorphin Pro 2 would never have been in the game. I would never have run a marathon in it. And this is. So I think that's really exciting. I think it's a really exciting, fun shoe to run in. It's, the Power Run Foam is kind of, it's bouncy, it's responsive, but it's not, it's not, if you put it next to the Zoom X, you're not sinking into it. It's not like a super plush, you know, it's got that firmness. And I think in past versions of the shoe, that has been what put, you know, it's been unstable and it's been too firm. It's not been, it's just been a bit meh, but the, somehow they've done something right. And it the, that foam is now bouncy, it's responsive. And I've really, I have really enjoyed running in this. It would be a contender for a spring marathon. I think they've, they've nailed the outsole too. I've not had any problems slipping in it. Obviously I've tested it in a heat wave. So, you know, I've not been running on, in torrential downpours in it but I feel like it's it feel like it looks like it would be more durable so that you could do you could buy this and do all of your speed training in it and then wear it on race day and it would get through all that because you don't want to you don't want to be saving a carbon shoe doing one race in it and then never wearing it again in my opinion um I really yeah I really enjoyed it I think it's a massive contender and it's I mean, it's it's the best Saucony indoor. It's the best Saucony carbon fiber shoe I've ever run in. Now, I haven't raced in this shoe, but I've done pretty much everything else I think I could do in it in terms of testing. Um, I've done some kind of interval, kind of road and track sessions in it. Um, I've done some shorter, sharper 5K, 10K stuff. I've just gone out and run kind of an hour uh, in them. And then I've done some longer runs where I've run at kind of my typical kind of marathon pace um and the biggest compliment i can give to this shoe is that i haven't had a bad run in it um it's probably one of the most enjoyable shoes i've run in in terms of a shoe that's nice to run quick in um and also just to do training miles in as well i think that's the most surprising thing for me you know a lot of the shoes you would probably want to reserve for your kind of for race day for those very specific quicker kind of training runs but i found there's a bit more versatility in terms of this shoe. And I think that comes down to a few things. Um, but in terms of my running experience, I think the, the, the things that make this shoe really work or really stand out, you've got that speed rail geometry, which I think really works really well on the pro and the speed series um, and kind of getting you kind of pushing you up, you know, through and onto your toes. Now, when it does that in this shoe, you, and you drop back onto your heel, which I do, um, you've got this massive amount of midsole foam here, which is bouncy, which is soft, creates this lovely kind of rebound that gets you back up and then gets you back into that motion. You've got that curved kind of column plate in there as well. As a co combination of things, it just feels like that, that motion works really nicely when you're running quick. Um, it's not one you can run slow in. I do think you can pare the pace down still a little bit and it still feels a lot more stable uh, than some shoes that I've run in or the kind of racing shoes that I've run in. The biggest thing I wanted to find out about this shoe is how it handled when my legs started to tire, as they do at kind of longer distances or like with everyone else, when you're running quicker, um, and you know, also you, in terms of what the shoes is on, it's designed for going quick, for consistently going quick, but you know, there's gonna be times when you are gonna slow up and you're gonna tire. So how does it feel in terms of that? And for me, I think it worked pretty well. Um, in my couple of longer runs, I, particularly in the last run that I did, I did start to tire. I was worried about how this shoe would feel in terms of slightly pairing the pace back. Um, and it felt fine. I didn't feel like, uh, you know, it was working against me in terms of still pushing me to run quicker than I wanted to at that point. And I think, you know, that's always going to be the case. It is designed for racing. But I think for me, in terms of my experience, when I have needed to kind of take that kind of speed back a little bit, it's been okay for me. And that's the kind of key thing for me that I wanted to find out. The other thing, I guess, durability um, in terms of what you want to get here. And I think, you know, it's strong overall. I think, you know, the outsole, 
Traction wise has been absolutely solid. I've run in rain. I've run in kind of hot, dry conditions that we've had, you know, we've had a heat wave in the UK. So it's been ideal to kind of test it from that point of view. And it's been fine. And I think the, you know, in terms of that wear that you're seeing, I may be getting a little bit on the sides of the exposed foam. There is exposed foam there, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of outsole there that is protected. And I think crucially, that's probably going to give it more kind of life than I think some other um, kind of top tier race shoes in terms of what you're getting in terms of protection of that exposed midsole foam. Um, now, yeah, for me, as I said, I didn't have a bad running shoe. It is one to run quick in. Um, I do think it has the versatility to be worked or used to be to work for kind of other sessions as well. Um, I love running it in the shorter, sharper stuff as well. Um, so yeah, all round, it feels like a great racing shoe. I've had a really strong experience from it. Uh, the only really fault I can really point out is that I'm starting to lose some lettering from the insole, uh, which is a minor, obviously. But um, but yeah, all good for me. The Pro Three, a very enjoyable shoe, a lovely shoe to run quick in. <music> So I think this is an outstanding update to the Endorphin Pro line. Uh, it's, I think it's more comfortable, it's faster, it's lighter, it's even got slightly better grip. There's really nothing not to like about the shoe except the slight price jump. But even then, it's pretty good value for a super shoe when you compare it to you know the other brands out there. Obviously, it's the same price as the Vaporfly, and that is tough. Like I really rate the shoe, and you know it is comparable, I think, to the Vaporfly in terms of performance. But the Vaporfly is the tried and tested option. It's very easy to recommend that. It's worked for so many runners, and if you're just going to spend you know, 210 pounds or 225 dollars on one racing shoe, then the Vaporfly is the safer option, but I think it is right up there with that shoe and probably a little bit more cushy if you're looking at the longer distances. Performance wise, I'd say I'd probably prefer it to the two ASIC shoes I've been testing recently, the Edge Plus and the Sky Plus. I think those are both excellent shoes as well, but I've enjoyed the Endorphin Pro 3 more. It gives me a better feeling to pull on this shoe and I'm more excited to run in it. I think it's just a really impressive all round ride. I think if you look at the way Super Shoes are developing at the moment, it seems like there's kind of two camps going on where you've got the the higher drop, kind of more nimble, strip back, you know, tippy forward, aggressive shoes like the Vaporfly and the Metaspeed Edge Plus or something like the Puma DV8 Nitro Elite. And then you've got the kind of chunkster camp, which are still quite lightweight, but they're much bigger, bouncier shoes, things like the Alphafly 2, the Adios Pro 3, the Asics Metaspeed Sky Plus to some extent, although it is still quite light. And they're more about kind of bounce and propulsion. This almost sits a little bit in between those camps for me. Like it's got a high, you know, it's got the eight millimeter drop in line with things like the Vaporfly, but it feels cushier and maybe a bit more bouncy than those shoes uh, and more cruisy in line with something like the Adios Pro 3 or Alpha Fly. So maybe it's a nice shoe that kind of splits the difference there. And I do think it's very versatile in terms of the racing and speed work it can handle. I think it would work very well for short races and certainly very well for things like the marathon. And I also think it's a nice shoe to pull on for lots of training as well. So it really has got a lot going on for it. Um, and I think it's an outstanding update all round. So yeah, big thumbs up on the Endorphin Pro 3. Overall, my verdict on the Pro Endorphin Pro 3 is they're a brilliant shoe. I'd happily have them in my arsenal. I would definitely use them for training all over the place, although I do try not to train in carbon plate shoes normally, but these kind of feel like the ones that you want to put on every day. They feel much more like normal shoes than some of the other kind of carbon plate super shoes. Um, so if you're after that kind of slightly odd feeling that gives you that fairy dust for race day, you're not going to get that in these shoes. They are very comfy and plush. They're much more like something like the New Balance Fuel Cell RC Elite. The only thing is these cost £210. Those cost about £140 at the moment online. And I would say fit exactly the same brief to me. However, I think Saucony have really, really hit a good one here. I think these could suit anyone who wants to run in a carbon plate shoe and really give it a whirl and doesn't want to go for that next level kind of alpha fly thing or is worried about discomfort. Um, they're much softer than something like the Adidas Pro 2 as well, which really rocks you forward, but is a lot harder feeling underfoot. So all in all, great shoe. Um, reacts well when you take it to speed, doesn't necessarily force you to run fast. And there are cheaper options out there, but if you're after um, a racer and you don't want to go down the kind of next percent alpha fly um, area, then these will do you very nicely, thank you, as long as you don't mind pink. Apparently they're bringing out a black and white one. It's a verdict, who's it for? Anyone who wants to run a marathon or half marathon or that kind of carbon fiber of shoe, this is a contender. This is definitely, it's around the same price point as the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent. It's kind of, a, yes, it's a bit more expensive than the 
Pro 2 version, but it's kind of around the ballpark of what you're going to pay these days for a shoe. I think it is it, it has a good amount of durability. Obviously, I've you know, I've not done I've not been running in this for months and months and months, but there's no I mean, there's literally no wear and tear at the moment. Um I think yeah, I think it's a strong contender and if you're if you're doing an autumn marathon, it's one to think about for sure. Um but again, it's a carbon fiber shoe, so don't buy it if you're gonna just run around the park. But yeah, definitely a contender in a way. I don't think other versions of the shoe ever have been. So my verdict on the Pro 3, I think is probably pretty evident from my run test section is that this is a fantastic shoe. I think it's a fantastic shoe to run quick in. I think it works at shorter distances. I think at those longer distances as well, I think it's gonna hold up as well. It's expensive. These top tier racing shoes are expensive. It's a little bit less than um, some of the other ones that are out there. I, you know, I think it's it's up there with the best in terms of what I've experienced. It's definitely a massive improvement on the Pro 2 in a lot of ways. Everything that's retained from the Pro 2 and the Saucony is added to in terms of that foam, in terms of that change, I think into a nicer, um, more supportive upper. Um, I think it's a massive upgrade from the Pro 3. It feels like a different shoe for me, basically. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's up there with the best uh, top tier racing shoes that you can get. I'll be tossing up whether to go for this or the Sky Plus in my marathon later this year. But I think this is going to appeal to a lot of people. I think it has versatility to work as a kind of bit of a trainer as well. Uh, one that you can use for race day um, and feels like it has strong durability and a bit more kind of life than some of the other racing shoes as well. So, yeah, all very positive for me. Big fan. One that is potentially going to work into my rotation as my kind of racing shoe and training shoe for kind of running those kind of quicker um, kind of race pace uh, runs. Um, yeah, all very impressive from Saucony. And yeah, pink colorway. I mean, it's not going to be for everyone, but pink feels like a good, good color for racing. Uh, it works for me. It's not going to be for everyone. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is what Saucony does. They're getting Larry with these colorways and uh yeah, I mean, I like it and I like how it runs most importantly. Okay, so my verdict for the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3, as you probably guessed, is it's a triumph, I think. Not the triumph, not Saucony's not Soc triumph, but an actual triumph for um, Saucony. I think this is the biggest step forward they've made after the speed. The speed 2, speed 1, speed 3, fantastic shoe and a shoe that we've talked about so much over the past couple of years. Um, but we've never really talked that much about the Pro or Pro 2. It's just they've sort of been a bit of a middling shoe that didn't deliver a lot. This is a really exciting update to, to that line because finally there's a Saucony super shoe that really can compete with things like the Vaporfly, the Alphafly, the A6 Meta Speed Sky Plus um, with a very similar experience. So this is going to fill a hole for a lot of people that have been looking for a super shoe and haven't been able to get a version from Saucony that does the job that those other shoes do. Um, it's just just does everything that you want from it, but with a nice bit of level of stability as well. So probably I'd liken it mostly to the A6 MSV Sky Plus, but slightly better when it comes to bounce um, and maybe the Alpha Fly because it's got a much wider base. Uh, the Vaporfly, I'd still say the Vaporfly is probably my go-to shoe for speed, um, but I much prefer wearing this for comfort stability um it just feels like a much more fitted conventional um supportive shoe than the vaporfly the vaporfly is you know a bit wobbly um it's 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 not it's designed for speed i would never use the vaporfly for doing slow training runs in it i probably would use this I, well i wouldn't because i wouldn't want to ruin it but it feels comfortable at slower runs as well so i think it's just a great all-rounder shoe that it's just a triumph for the way that the amount of changes that they've made to the shoe uh, so well done Saucony um, and I'm really looking forward to running in this a lot more over the next uh, few weeks uh, as I come up to Chicago Marathon
So that's it from us. Thanks a lot for watching this review of the Socony Endorphin Pro 2. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell icon and check the channel out for all the other videos we've got from the latest road and trail shoes, as well as running headphones and watches out at the moment. And don't forget that we also have our monthly podcast now, and that comes out at the end of every month. If you go into caption below, you can find the link where you will be able to go to all the different places that the podcast is hosted on. It's designed so that you can listen to it out on the run, listen to us guys chatting about kit races all sorts of things um and yeah give it a go and uh yeah give us, leave us a comment let us know what you think about it because we do have a section in the podcast where we answer your questions uh so thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you soon mm -hmm.